we do need to address inequalities thereby leaving no one behind. This will bring countries, peoples, communities together to address human rights um, and issues that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. The shift in the way we conceptualize human rights, understanding human rights as relevant to almost, if not all, that we do. That human rights is relevant to climate change, human rights is relevant to development, human rights is relevant to migration, human rights is central to the resolution of conflict. That way if we can shift our thinking into a common understanding that everything is about its impact on human beings, I think that will give us a very precise focus. Well, I think as we head into this new generation, um, we need to think about the open internet really as the key to um, greater engagement with human rights. Um, the open internet is the place in which human rights are going to be enjoyed in the future, they're the place where rights are going to be contested um, and where infringements of rights are remedied. And you know, we already have 3.5 billion people online, we have another 3.7 to go. So if there's anything, you know, any one great shift that can happen, it can be a commitment to an open internet for all people. And I think that's the place where we'll find human rights are enjoyed, explored and, and um, understood in the future. Now you look at politics, it's all about electoral politics. It's not once you win it, what is it that you will do to enhance people's dignity? People, is not, people are not even talking in terms of dignity. Even in terms of development, they're talking about bricks and mortar, not really talking about a development of human capital, of people's uh, expertise, of people's skills, people's capacity, uh, giving them assurance of health, giving them education for empowerment, giving them shelter, giving them that security that they need for their well-being. I mean, what is being promised is security through weapons. And it's all wrong. We have to, we have to turn that narrative around. A narrative can only be turned around if you have a wise bunch of leadership, not just one or two. Well, this is a very challenging question because international human rights system has been traditionally inclined to show the problems, but uh, it will be more effective it, if it uh, gets involved in solving the problems. I mean, we need a hands-on Human Rights Council. We need a, a Human Rights Council that becomes a preventive council, that becomes a cooperation council, that goes beyond uh, uh, its capacities, its current capacities, in order to fully fulfill uh, its mandate. That's what we need. I think the most important shift that needs to happen is that the global community needs to come together and address the effects of digital technology on the enjoyment of human rights. There are so many ways in which digital technology has facilitated human rights, the exercise of human rights, free expression, freedom of assembly and association. Human rights defenders around the world depend upon digital technology. but the violation of human rights around the world is also being facilitated by digital technology and we need to get our hands around that. I also think we need to address how to square the use of digital technology that is trans-border by nature um, and in a system where everything we do can, can be tracked and monitored. I think those issues need to be addressed on a conceptual level. And to make sure that, that we can bring them under the human rights framework. Last, I would say the role of technology companies is really important. Um, digital technology companies own and operate and secure what has become the infrastructure for society. And yet the human rights framework doesn't adequately address accountability for technology companies. And I think many companies want to be human rights champions, but we need a better framework for understanding their role and responsibility. I believe in civil society participation in the decision-making process and decision-making space in human rights system is very important and can really make a shift in the engagement on the human rights system. And by that I mean, one, 
you consider that the main decisions and the main developments in human rights are being taken place in intergovernmental space like the United Nations. And civil society actually are part of this system, but not the ones that are voting and deciding. But one civil society should claim more and more for, to have space in the table of the negotiations and be part of the, the decision-making process at the UN regarding human rights. And second, also civil societies should hold our governments more and more accountable for their positions at the human rights system. For instance, the Human Rights Council. So our own governments are there voting and take the decisions on our behalf on the future of human rights system. And they should be held accountable. First, their position should be transparent and we have to have access to the positions of our governments. And then um, our diplomats, for instance, they should consult civil society and should build this position, hearing the positions of civil society groups as well. I think it should be, I mean, from build the movement, the international human rights system and international human rights movement from local, from national realities to the global level uh, and not only from a, within the human rights movement but also this need to bridge with other actors like uh, social movements, for example indigenous uh, communities, union workers, a peace and women uh, movement and, and work in a, in a very uh, strategic way with a human rights organizations, civil society and try to reach at the national level, but also at the international level, the states uh, in order to uh, set the standards, to, to work, to defend the achievements that were uh, made so far, but also in these uh, difficult times, uh, trying to move forward in um, strengthening the, the system. I mean, basically, if the international human rights system has built from the final, this, the Second World War, from the international and the global level to the national, I think today it will be the, re, the, the reveal or the relativization in the other way, from national to global. And, and in order to do so, it will be important uh, strategic collaboration from different actors.